Hey YouTube, how's it going? This is Game Straight One. This is the top uh, ten rarest video game systems that I own. If you haven't seen the other three segments of the series, I encourage you guys to watch those first. Uh, in the meantime, let's get on to number ten. And number ten on my list of rare systems that I own is the TriStar 64. I did this review. It was just my very first video I did on this channel, uh, and it's very interesting. I've, I've, it's a it's a clone. It's, it's an unlicensed Nintendo product. And it came out in Hong Kong, and what it does, it attaches to your N64, and it enables you to play um, Super Nintendo games, Famicom games, Super, uh, let's see, Nintendo games, uh, Super Nintendo games, and as well as obviously Nintendo 64 games. Probably the coolest, coolest thing about this, though, it actually uh, works. There's like almost like a, a thing called the, I think it's called the X Terminator program, which works as a game genie, if you will, and it allows you for pretty much every N64 game allows you to do cheats and put in codes and stuff so pretty cool device and it looks really cool when you hook up to your N64 and then you have the N64 DD below it um, it's an add-on and this is where the Famicom and Nintendo games go this is where the Super Nintendo games and uh, Super Famicom games go and this is where your Nintendo 64 games go on number nine number nine on my list is the Turbo uh, Duo it came out by company called Turbo Technologies in 1992 and essentially what it is it, um, it, it's a TurboGrafx-16, it plays two cards cue cards, excuse me, and it plays a CD, a TurboGrafx-16 CD games which is cool, so it's all in one uh, very similar to uh, the JVC-XI for the Sega Genesis or the CDX um, it came out pretty much the same year as uh, Sega CD uh, didn't sell very well, only lasted a few years and uh, it retailed for, for a pretty penny I think it was about $300 when it came out. Now, it consisted of ex-employees from uh, both NEC and Hudson Soft, uh, two of the main makers for the NEC uh, system. There is a Japanese version of this. It's called the PC Engine uh, Duo R. It's white, uh, but it's just the same thing. Another thing that's kind of cool about the system, it has an extra 192K RAM, which uh, enables you to play a little better games. Uh, I think the game that I have here right here is uh, John Madden Football, which is one of the very first... Uh, CD-based John Madden, Madden games, just kind of cool to do a review over that uh, eventually here soon. So this is uh, pretty rare, didn't sell very well, and uh, you can look on eBay, and if you do see one there, they do sell for quite a bit. And I got this in a uh, mint in box when I bought it. On to number eight. All right, guys, number eight. Uh, we're getting into some really tough decisions for myself as far as which order I should put these systems because they're all really rare. Uh, but I decided to make number eight my FM Towns Marty. This is a Japanese-only uh, system. It came out in 1991 uh, by a company called Fujitsu, which you guys might recognize the name of, a major manufacturer of electronics. Uh, in 1994, they released uh, FM Towns Mario 2, and they also had like a, a car version as well that, that was kind of cool. Essentially what it is, there was the FM uh, Towns computers were very huge uh, in Japan, and so they made a, a home console version. What makes this unit really cool is it's the very first 32-bit um, uh, CD playing system to ever reach the market. It, it beat the um, uh, Commodore's uh, 32, uh, CD32 to the market. Um, anyway, uh, that's FM Tom Marty, and it, it's, it's extremely rare. On to number seven. Number seven on my list is the Pioneer Laser Active Player with uh, Genesis uh, Sega CD and Sega Genesis Pack. I did, just did a review on this recently, and essentially what it is, it's a laser disc player, but there's packs here you can add on to it. And there was a Genesis pack. There's also an NEC uh, TurboGrafx-16 and TurboGrafx CD pack as well. This thing is very, very rare and a high collector's item for collectors. So it came out in 1993 and didn't sell very well at all. Super expensive when it came out. So on to number six. Number six on my list is the Sega SG-1002 system. This came out in, uh, well typically this one version came out in 1984. There was an SG-1000 Model 1, which came out in 1983. Initially released in Japan by Sega. It's one of Sega's first consoles they released. It uh, came about before uh, what we know as the Sega Master System or the Sega uh, Mark III system in Japan. What's interesting about the system is it never released in the States. I think it was released in New Zealand, uh, I think uh, South Africa, and I think parts of Europe as well. Um, it plays cartridges. I did a review on this earlier on. This was my first review I did, one of them anyway. Uh, so if you want to find out more, the, the, cart, the controllers hook on here. Uh, the Model 1 is very rare as well. So, this is number 6 on number 5. 
Number five on my list, this is a, one of the weirdest, strangest systems I own. It does not play games, it's made by Atari, so I may include it in this list because it, it's very unique and it's, it's very rare. It only was out for one year here in the States. It's called the Atari Video Music Player. Um, and <clears throat> what's, what's interesting about this, this thing is what it does is it hooks up your TV and it hooks up to a stereo and it, it plays, uh, plays graphics to the beat of the songs. Like, almost like a Winamp, if you will. I did a review on this, so if you want to find out more. It didn't sell very well at all. Um, there's, there's this urban legend story I heard that one of the Sears representatives was talking to the Atari guy, and um, he's like, what were, they were showing this at one of the conventions, he's like, what were they smoking? And uh, the Atari guys come out behind the wall door or something like that, and they're smoking a blunt. Um, so, uh, Atari was very laid back back in the day in the 70s, but this came out in 1976. This is the Atari Video Music, and we're on to number four already. Now, I'm sure you guys are wondering, you know, I know the iPhones are becoming popular with all these apps and these games and stuff. Everybody's wondering, why didn't Apple ever make a system? Well, they actually designed a system. It's interesting. It's number four on my list of rare systems I own. It's called the Apple Bandai Pippin. It's the at world model. Um, this came out in 1995. It's designed by Apple. It's, it was produced by Bandai uh, through an agreement. Um, now, this is a very extreme, extremely rare version of it. There's two models. There's the At World, uh, which is this model right here in the States, and there's the At Mark, which is a wider model and only sold in Japan. Um, now there's only about 42,000 of these ever were made and shipped, um, and it's one of the biggest busts in video games history as far as consoles go. Controller is really cool. I did a review on this system in one of my early videos, so I encourage you guys to watch that if you want to learn more. Uh, it's it's really rare because this is the black model. It's the only one I've ever seen on, on auction sites and stuff. So I was very fortunate to find this. I got a really good deal on it. And it plays a lot of edutainment games, which is like education games. Um, it's basically an uh, Apple computer, uh, but it's a console. And the controllers are probably one of the best controllers I've ever seen. Uh, you can actually hook it up to your monitor or your TV. Um, and um, it's a definite collector's item. So on to number three. Number three on my list of rarest video game systems that I own is the Nintendo 64 DD system. Now this is a, one of, a really cool collector's item. Came out, it's a Nintendo product, came out in Nintendo only in Japan in 1999. Only less than 15,000 of these ever were sold, and it was only sold available through uh, initially uh, online, uh, online website that it would be shipped to you. And there's only a handful of, of games that were, would come out for it. It's a disk drive, and there's some really great games. Mario Artist, it's a, kind of a sequel to Mario Paint. Uh, there's a number of those, and there's a, I did a review on not only on the system, but it's just some game footage early on in one of my videos too. So if you guys want to find out more about this, uh, definitely check it out. But Never was sold in the States. It's considered one of the rarest games. Only 15,000 of, 15, of these were ever made. Uh, it's hard to know how many of them actually still exist. Um, but uh, it's pretty cool. It touches right onto Nintendo 64 on the very bottom. If you look at the very bottom of Nintendo 64, you'll see a slot at the very bottom of it. And that's what this was intended for. So, on number two. On to number two of my list is the it's by a company called Fun Tech. It's called the Super A Can. Uh, now, the box will say it says Super A Can. The uh, console itself just says a can, so it's hard to know what it is. But it came out in 1995 uh, by in Taiwan only. Uh, it's a 16-bit 16 16-bit system. It looks very similar to like a clone of a Nintendo 64 here in the states, uh, but it's own it's its own system. It's got about 12 games were released for it. Um, actually, the graphics are slightly better than the Super Nintendo, uh, but it came out too late in 1995. By this time, Sega, uh, Sony Sony released a PlayStation. Uh, you got the Sega Saturn, it was getting ready to be released, you had the 3DL, there's a whole bunch of 32-bit systems, so why would you go up and buy a 16-bit system, uh, cartridge-based, when you get a CD-based 32-bit system. So, it was very short-lived. It's hard to know how many of these extras are still around, especially here in the States, but um, it's just a pretty rare system. I did a review on it earlier on, if you want to see a video on that. On to number one. And number one on my list is the Bally Home Computer. Uh, it came out in 1977. I'll explain to you why this is this particular version of it is so rare. Um, this came out by Midway. Uh, it's interesting to think that a company who made Mortal Kombat actually initially made home console uh, as well. Uh, it wasn't released until 1978, and initially what the system was released as was a home uh, library computer, only through mail order uh, in 1977. Now, by the time these were actually shipped out, they changed the name to uh, Bally Professional Arcade, and later on it became the Astrocade. So they changed the names over it many times. But this particular version, the home library computer version, it was one of the very first versions of it, and, and these even hit the market 
Uh, I don't know how I got my hands on this, but this is the rarest version of it because I think only a few of these were actually shipped out. But like I said before, in 1978, by the time actually it was shipped out, they changed the name altogether. Um, the Astrocade itself is fairly rare, but it's this particular version of the home library computer that only, uh, only a handful of these were ever released. So I got this mint in the box when I bought it. I'm very fortunate. It's got some of the coolest controllers I've ever seen for a home console, uh, even today. Uh, check out my review on it. I think you guys will enjoy it. Uh, thanks for watching my list, guys, and uh, stay classy, YouTube. Take care.